Hi everyone, Jillian here. Um, I'm going to start by making some connections between this week's readings and the readings from week one, which we didn't really get a chance to discuss on the Adobe Connect. Um, so hopefully now we can have a chance to kind of dig into those readings. So I'd like to start with um, the Holt, Buckley, and Whalen lit review titled The Impact of Exposure to Domestic Violence on Children and Young People. Now, um, relating this to Baker and Cunningham's study, uh, they both kind of are indicative of some of the concerns with many studies on domestic violence. Um, for example, some criticisms that we found consistent throughout both articles um, were the fact that much of the data is exclusively collected from women's shelters and exclude families who don't seek those supports. Um, for example, immigrant families who often seek public health supports less than other families. Now, Holt, Holt Buckley, and Whalen acknowledge that children are active in constructing their social world and are not simply passive bystanders. However, we rarely listen to their stories and treat them as players in their own road to resiliency. Um, they're often reduced to just numbers on a data page. And these empirical studies um, overlook how drastically different trauma can affect children, especially at different stages of development. And finally, as Baker and Cunningham emphasize, the binary classification in many of these surveys and questionnaires skews statistical results. Um, for example, we saw how Angela's family, their experience with trauma was not included in many studies because the violence had existed two years previous to the study. Now, despite the fact that this wasn't included in the data, obviously this trauma has a lifelong impact on the victims.